नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू स्टडी आई क्यू आई एम योर फ्रेंड राहुल साईगांवकर लेट्स कंटिन्यू आर डिस्कशन फॉर मेन्स ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स फॉर साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी इन आर प्रीवियस सेशन वी हैड डिस्कस सम इम्पॉर्टेंट फेसिट्स ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन एंड कम्युनिकेशन टेक्नोलॉजी वेर वी अंडरस्टूड आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस एंड ब्लॉक चेन बेस्ड कंटेंट लेटर ऑन वी फोकस ऑन सम ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट बायोटेक्नोलॉजी बेस्ड टॉपिक्स एंड टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट नैनो टेक्नोलॉजी नाउ नैनो टेक्नोलॉजी इज वन ऑफ द फेवरेट टॉपिक्स फॉर यूपीएससी फॉर लास्ट सेवन टू एट ईयर्स इट इज रिलेटिवली न्यू आइडिया मेनी टाइम्स वी यूज द टर्म्स नैनो साइंस एंड नैनो टेक्नोलॉजी टूगेदर यू डू अंडरस्टैंड द डिफरेंस बिटवीन साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी साइंस इज बेसिकली द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ अ सब्जेक्ट वेर वी कंडक्ट सम सॉर्ट ऑफ एक्सपेरिमेंटेशन सम ऑब्जर्वेशन सम बेसिक थेरीज एंड वी क्रिएट द अंडरस्टैंडिंग एज अ होल ऑफ दैट सब्जेक्ट and once i use that subject to apply and create some application for myself that becomes a part of technology so what is technology i would call it simply applied science science is basic theoretical part and applied science is a technology but since nanotechnology is a relatively new idea we use these terms interchangeably nano science nanotechnology and this topic from my personal point of view is one of the easiest to prepare for upsc civil service examination now you must be thinking sir why why as i told you it is a nascent technology it is undergoing a lot of research and development as of now for the last 10 to 15 years it is still under r and d phase not many big applications have come out but many theories many ideas many research papers have been continuously published in this field of nanotechnology so if you create a framework for yourself to understand nanotechnology and its basic applications and issues around it your preparation for this topic is done and dusted and the biggest advantage is the type of questions that appear in this subject now if you look at some of the questions that have appeared before they are relatively easier since the new technology the framework of the questions is also very simple where they ask your understanding about nanotechnology nano science and their potential applications what the government is doing for its betterment what are the issues with nanotechnology and these are the kind of basic ideas or the questions that have appeared and that's why from my personal point of view it's one of the easiest topic if you simply create a framework for yourself finish it off revise it done all right i hope you have done it but in this interaction we'll talk about nano science nanotechnology and some of the important applications surrounding it and its evolution as well all right so without any delay let's begin first things first what is the meaning of nanotechnology now nanotechnology it is it is a science or it is an area of technology which basically deals with dimensions at a very low scale dimensions or tolerances less than 100 nanometer they become a part of nanotechnology basically i would say uh, of the field of nanotechnology it runs from 1 nanometer to 100 nanometer this is basically nanotechnology that means i am manipulating i am manipulating things at the level of atom at the level of molecules now in in our science 101 in our school days we have understood what is the size of an atom size of an atom is mentioned in in a, in a term called as angstrom you know that it's of the order of 10 to the power of minus 10 so very close to nano level anything below anything below 100 nanometers it becomes a part and parcel of nanotechnology and nano science that means we are engineering at the level of atoms and molecules now you'll be having a question sir i'm still not getting feel of nanotechnology now to understand it in more simpler terms one needs to one needs to get a feel of it of how any matter interacts with its surroundings now for instance for me for me my surrounding see i am i am a, a macro person a macro molecule <laughs> a macro person so for me the environment around me is such that i have air around me i feel air as a gas but imagine imagine at the nano level at the nano level an organism or a particle it perceives its surrounding its environment in a different way for example take take example of a smallest organism that we can feel say take ant how does an ant perceive surrounding around it for me the environment or the atmosphere it has gas air is like a gas for me but for an ant air is like a fluid for it i i hope you get a feel here that's why 
properties at the nano level and their interaction with their surroundings and and the and the external external environment it gives it unique characteristic for instance for instance the simple example now i have this gold ring here i have this gold ring here now this gold ring you can see it is it is quite shiny right it is quite shiny now the appearance of gold at the macro level is is metallic yellow right but when you create gold nanoparticles its color changes that means gold nanoparticles they interact with its surroundings with it, with its environment in such a way that they reflect the red light most but right now this gold is reflecting yellow light the most so its appearance changes its chemical properties changes its physical property changes it can interact with the environment in different way that is the beauty of nanotechnology and when i when i use or when we develop some application by using that characteristic it becomes a part and parcel of your nanoscience and nanotechnology right now a question comes up so when did this field of nanotechnology it gained traction i would say from last 20 years nanoscience nanotechnology has been continuously booming but one of the earliest ideas of nanoscience or some opening about this was given by Richard Feynman, who is also considered the father of the nanoscience nanotechnology. Richard Feynman, in 1959, he he was uh, he was speaking in a conference where he gave a talk which was titled "There's plenty of room at the bottom." Now, this particular title, "There's plenty of room at the bottom," it opened up a new arena for scientists for researchers where they started to discuss or focus on more and more smaller kind of fabrication smaller kind of development earlier we used to talk about micro technology but today we discuss about nanotechnology so this idea given in 1959 it laid the ground for nanotechnology that we see today now if we look at the nanotechnology and its developments as i told you since the last 20 years this field is evolving initially around 1990s around 2000s we started to develop small nanoparticles meaning if there is gold which is metallic yellow here in in, in the in the macro at the macro level i create a nano gold and its characteristics would change nanoparticles which were mostly passive nanoparticles later on from 2005 we move from passive nanoparticles to active nanoparticles in another five years, we started to get more and more expertise in this field. From simple nanomaterials, nanoparticles, we started to develop nanosystems. So, from early nanoparticles, we moved to nanomaterials. From nanomaterials, we have moved to nanosystems. And today, we talk about molecular nanosystems where you get or you read about research papers which talk about creating nanobots. Nanobots, nanobots run surgery right nanobots which can uh, deliver drug at a specific point in your body to a specific cell in your body we talk about all these things right so this is the evolution of nanotechnology now if we talk about how we have developed these nanoparticles and nanomaterials there are basically two approaches that we use now the initial approach was top down approach now top down is also basically the idea of dry nanotechnology right where most of the top down processes are dry nanotechnology now top down is very simple as i told you now there is this gold macro gold i keep on milling it i keep on milling it that means i break it into smaller and smaller and smaller kind of pieces by using some sort of physical method say for example physical milling process itself i take up gold i create gold powder i keep on milling that gold powder at one point of time i turn the structure of the gold into nanostructure at the if, if i look look at that under uh, the 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 advanced microscopes like the uh, scanning electron microscope afm right afm scm etc if i look at look under them i'll see nano structure of that gold so initially we use top down approach but slowly and steadily as we started to create active nanomaterials nano systems we understood that bottom up approach is something which is much better now bottom up approach in majority of bottom up approaches we use wet nanotechnology meaning meaning i break it chemically or i break it to the atomic or molecular level 
by using some sort of thick say chemical processes one of the one of the examples of bottom up approach is the cvd method now cvd method is called chemical vapor deposition chemical vapor deposition now this is a method which is used to create carbon nanotubes it is also used to create graphene it is also used to create many other nanoparticles and nanomaterials now what do we do i vaporize a material using some sort of chemical process i vaporize a material and then i i ensure that the same material is deposited on some substrate and i can later on manipulate this and using this we have we have developed uh, so many applications again cvd is not the not only one process of bottom approach but there are many other processes which scientists are working towards uh, to develop novel nanoparticles and nanomaterials and till now we have been developing different kinds of nanomaterials initially initially we developed metal based nanoparticles say nano zinc nano gold nano silver nano platinum we understood they have novel characteristic novel physical and chemical properties we brought them under different applications for instance uh, nano titanium dioxide is used in many of the uh, many of the beauty many of the beauty based industries or cosmetic industry later on we also developed carbon based nano materials predominantly carbon nanotube fullerenes graphene in recent times we have also developed dendrimers now dendrimers are these organic nano sized materials or molecules which have found great application in medical industry now one of the dendrimers which is in news these days is the pamam polyamido amine these are nanomaterials which are more exclusively used for drug delivery now pamam you will see the mention of pamam in so many research papers where it is a, it has a structure it has a symmetrical kind of a structure with high surface area and gaps where you can you can deliver the drug to those portions or those locations apart from that we have developed nano composites now this is something which which is applied or which we can see or feel in our day to day lives for instance nano composites uh, nano composites are are used in many creation of uh, many equipment that you have for instance i have a i have a badminton racket which says uh, it is made up of nano material or it is made up of nano carbon it's very lightweight for example spectacles now spectacles are are being made of nano composite which is extremely light but powerful racket extremely light but powerful cycle the cycle frame is made up of nano composites which is very very light but very sturdy now if it, if it is light and if it is sturdy that means its performance will be better so many such things have come out to nano composites as well all right so these are some of the nano materials now if we look at some of the developments that have taken place in our country since 2001 nano science and nano technology is being promoted continuously by ministry of science and technology under ministry of snd we have department of science and technology in 2001 we started the nano science and technology initiative in 2007 five year plan we started a mission for nano science and nano technology with a with a allocation of 650 crore for it we later on Uh, we later on extended this particular mission it continued till 2017 under dst in 2013 nano science technology innovation policy was developed today more than 1000 crore allocation is given to this particular field different institutions have come up there is a nano science center in indian institute of science bengaluru there is jnc asr jawala nehru center for advanced scientific research where nano science based research is going on for nano technology based regulatory setup we have created nanotechnology regulatory board which regulates the products which come from nanotech industry in the last 10 to 20 years there has been a lot of push towards this there is a specific division or specific initiative under ministry of electronics and information technology a working group on nanotechnology has identified that we will be specifically working on advanced nano electronics which is also called as post more electronics now you do understand more gordon more was uh, one of the theorists or one of the scientists who suggested that every 2 years the number of transistors in electronic equipment would double but i think more's law has also been broken these days uh, we talk about so much of development in electronics 
the mate has also identified post more electronics beyond 10 nanometers the government is promoting more and more work on sensors nano sensors in health agriculture security etc the focus is also on organic electronics computational nano electronics setting up different prototypes and incubation facilities for range of devices and products connected with nanotechnology over a course of 10 to 15 years in india we have stood at number three of course better than us are china and usa in terms of the publications and in terms of r d but in last 15 to 20 years india has published more than 25000 papers connected with nanoscience ranked only third behind china and usa there have been more than 300 patents which have been filed from the indian patent office under nanoscience the nano mission since 2007 itself has resulted in more than 5000 research papers and more than 900 phds there are many new schemes which have been initiated by the government like unnati inspire etc which have created more and more interest in nanotechnology and today if we look at its applications you will find applications almost everywhere electronics is one of the fields where meti is focused on carbon nanotube are close to replacing silicon in electronics a novel metal graphene and its properties have been ideal and they are being looked into or or there is a there is an attempt at developing new kinds of touch screen where graphene would be used nanotechnology is already being used in new flash memory chips so nano electronics is a very important field upcoming field where a lot of potential applications have been seen apart from that the energy market can also be disrupted very soon by nanotechnology new semiconductor which has been developed by kyoto university in japan it is being already used in solar panels which can convert solar energy into electrical energy very very effectively nanotechnology is trying to improve fuel production nano based scrubbers or carbon nanotube is being used to reduce pollution the exhaust from the uh, from uh, from the vehicles quick charging technologies are being developed nanotechnology is being used to lower the cost of many products apart from that medicine is one field where we might expect a huge revolution any day why because nanotechnology can help in can help in providing therapeutic benefits can help in providing diagnostic benefits early diagnosis and early treatment of cancer by using gold nanoparticles is one of the ideas which is in development many pharmaceutical products are being developed as I told you, gold, silver nanoparticles for cancer detection treatment, drug, drug delivery using the PAMAM is one of the research that is going on. New ideas of imaging and diagnostic using nano biosensors are in progress. Different nanopore materials are being looked into for gene sequencing technologies. If there is any injury, if there is any injury, graphene nano ribbons and different nanofibers are being developed for quick healing for wound dressing and for surgery for surgical textiles nanobots again this is i wouldn't say large scale applications have come but research is going on on using nanobots for micro surgeries smart pills are being developed you take a pill it will it will give you proper results and the drug would be delivered at the targeted location right so some of the applications are quite novel. A lot of research papers have been published on this. Under the food industry, food processing industry, nano biosensors can be used to detect the presence of food. This will help in enhancing the uh, this will help in enhancing the shelf life of food itself because we can understand if the food is good or bad using biosensors without even opening it. Equipment and textile industry has already seen revolution. These days we talk about the sweat-free sweat free textiles the uh, sweat free textiles silver induced textiles which which have antimicrobial properties smart materials or nano material based composites which are creating very lightweight helmets which are very strong probably we'll look at some of the other applications in army uh, bulletproof vest bulletproof helmets etc a lot of equipments have already come in the market right now apart from these there are a lot of applications in environment as well. Nanotechnology based sensors, nanotechnology based air purification center, water purification center, national uh, nano filtration uh, systems are being developed. 
for for desalination also nanotechnology breakthroughs are sought in in uh, chemi chemistry nano catalysts are dubbed as one of the uh, important applications which can help even with environment based applications now these are some generic applications which you might focus on apart from that if there is any question which can be anticipated or predicted it might be on agriculture and it might be on specific specific application of some novel metals like graphene so for agriculture we are looking at some of the applications where nano application for enhancing the penetration of herbicides chemicals fertilizers so that there is reduced input cost nano sensors nano biosensors and delivery systems for precision farming nano biosensors to detect plant viruses and stop those viruses and nano barcodes and nano processing systems can be used in future to assess agricultural yield or the food grains for quality check apart from that some novel applications are being are being developed in wearables in wearables nano fiber based nano fiber based materials which can be embedded in your skin right a heatable glove textile exoskeleton nano board based surgery and some new nano material based composites are under development apart from that if a question is due i would say a question can be can be expected on graphene now this graphene is a novel nano material which is one atom thick layer of carbon in a hexagonal lattice structure it's something like this the single unit is carbon in a hexagonal structure right one atom thick now scientists have suggested that this is a novel material this is the thinnest material which is as strong as steel or more than 200 times stronger than steel apart from that it has excellent properties with respect to heat conductivity and electrical conductivity and that is why huge amount of research is going on over graphene potential applications of graphene are seen in battery technology electronics energy generation use of super super capacitors it is also being tested for dna sequencing it is it is uh, probably it is going to be used in future for touch screens for water filtration for desalination many things apart from this apart from graphene which i can call it as an allotrope of carbon there is another structure of carbon called as carbon nanotubes when you roll when you roll graphene into into a pipe like structure you get carbon nanotubes there can be different kind of carbon nanotubes single walled carbon nanotubes multi walled carbon nanotubes and these carbon nanotubes they have also seen applications in varied fields not just carbon nanotubes graphene carbon nanotubes or fullerenes which are also called bucky balls they have seen application in so many areas in drug delivery in phototherapy in gene delivery thermal therapy gas storage in in composites in diagnostics in electronics in many areas in many fields these novel materials are being tested and very soon we might see their application as well so all in all one can say that nanotechnology is a novel field a new field a nascent idea it is still under development a lot of r and d is going on but again slow and steadily applications are also coming but this field is all is also not free of any issues first of all when we talk about nanotechnology there is always an issue with india with respect to funding funding of r and d although uh, we can say that now india in terms of its spending it is spending a little more than 1% of its gdp almost in in a few years i think we'll reach 2% of gdp or close to 2% of our gdp spending on r and d which is a good thing but despite all this there are issues first of all there would be technical issues with us because we we will be needing more and more funding towards nano science nanotechnology there would be some environmental issues and there would be some equity issues also with nanotechnology what would be environmental issues we do not know the long term consequences of it we do not know the long term consequences of nanotechnology can nanoparticle enter into my skin 
can they enter into my blood stream and cause some sort of poisoning if a nano material based or nano particle based aerosol or a gas is is left free in the atmosphere how is it going to impact we do not know so environmental issues are there some equity based problems can also be explained for instance nanotechnology is a novel idea where some countries have taken a head start india is still developing country but least developed countries they are not even bothered about this so nanotechnology based applications whatever come there would be inequity among the developed nations and developing nations and least developed countries so whatever wide gap which is already present between the north and the south the global north and global south that gap is further going to be widened apart from that there will be ethical issues for sure ethical issues means now you are now playing with the atom you are now engineering or pardon me you you, you are now you are now changing or manipulating at the atomic level what repercussions will it have we still do not know that apart from that there are always security issues can a nanotechnology based program or or nanomaterials nanotechnology active nanomaterials uh, active nanobots can they be weaponized till now that has not happened but you must have seen so many so many ideas so many sci-fi uh, theories which talk about some some kind of a uh, development where nanotechnology based applications can be weaponized or it may be weaponized and one of the ideas is the concept of ecophagy have you heard of this ecophagy ecophagy or even biophagy is also used ecophagy means a scenario it is it is a cataclysmic scenario where a nanotechnology based application eating up the entire world it's also called the idea of grey goo right grey goo uh, grey goo is an idea which is given by a scientist which is nothing but ecophagy where the nanobot or the nanobot assemblies they keep on consuming or they keep on degrading things on earth till everything is ended it's a it's a catastrophic future again just a hypothetical idea called ecophagy or grey goo that's why many people give a warning that only we can prevent grey goo or ecophagy uh, so never release nano assemblers without replication limiting code that means there has to be some sort of limiting setup limiting idea so security issues can be there now that is what you will see with any kind of nanotechnology of course there are many advantages the limits are still not known we don't know where it can stop it can it can revolutionize the health industry it can revolutionize the electronic industry the battery technology industry everywhere it can bring a revolution but it also comes up with its own issues issue of safety issue of ethics issue of equity issue of threat to environment is also very very uh, very very real and that's why we need proper regulation at the national level as well as at the international level all right so that that's the basic framework that we need right nanotechnology what is the meaning of it what are the potential applications what is the latest research that is going on uh, again i would say question on graphene has a very high probability of of being asked so do prepare that i would say more comprehensively but this is a framework where if you understand the issues questions might appear from this particular idea all right all right so that's the completion of nanotechnology preparation for us before i head out i have to tell you about this because our p2i program is starting or, or rather say it has started it is ending its admission is ending on uh, august 31st 2023 you still have i would say a couple of days decide now it's now or never do not do not have that procrastinating behavior come out of the inertia i know uh, many people would be scared should i prepare or not how do i prepare right if you have so many questions in your mind just talk to a counselor just give a call to study iq a mentor will speak to you they'll clear all your doubts if you have any queries you can also ask me on this particular idea that it rahul sai to do just message me on ig i would respond immediately if you have any queries any queries connected to the program connected to the preparation you can ask there and join as soon as possible 
it's a very affordable program you have heavy discounts on the programs if you use my code rahul life and it is the most comprehensive program where we will be with you for prelims mains and interview do it now i'll see you in the class for any queries do reach out here thank you again for watching jai hind